Hello, I'm Jonathan Morton, and welcome to my series, Judge the Cover, where I take an in-depth look at cover design by picking a book off the shelf and judging the factors that help it succeed or fail at capturing its targeted audience. Today, I'll be looking at Trader's Blade by Sebastian de Castel. Now, take a good hard look at this cover. Here's the spine, and here's the first sentence from the book's blurb. Mind you, I don't know all the characters' names or how to pronounce them, so I might do a few of them wrong. Falcio is the first contour of the Great Copes, an elite corpse of 144 men and women whose mission is to travel the land and uphold the king's laws. Now comment, make a mental note, or write down any emotions, thoughts, themes, or general plot details that you feel this cover is trying to convey. If you've read it before, think back to what made you pick up the book in the first place. Don't worry, the intro will give you some time to think it over. There's no denying that people judge things by their covers. And it usually comes down to wanting to shy away from, or engage more into, a particular experience. The saying, don't judge a book by its cover, can apply to a variety of situations, and in general, is a good rule to follow. By making snap judgments, we deprive ourselves of the ability to dive deeper, learn more, or experience something new. However, being able to judge a situation quickly can not only protect us, but increase the likelihood of engaging in experiences we already enjoy. In the book world, covers craft these expected experiences in readers' minds. So, the question becomes, how do you get the right readers to pick up your book? I believe it's all about how they judge the cover. Now let's see what the Trader's Blade cover can teach us today. Before I start analyzing the book, there are a few things that need to be said. First, I found this book in the library, and as we all know, librarians are known for ruining perfectly good spines with these stickers. They say it makes them easier to organize, but I say it makes my job harder. I blame my librarian friend, whose name I'm not going to say because I didn't ask if she would allow me to say it online. And from this point on, we'll be known as Nameless Librarian Friend. The second is that if you look this book up online, you will most likely see this cover, which I'm glad they kept the font. Spoiler. I like the font on this book. The fluidity and sharpness of the edges makes me instantly think about how a rogue sword dances through the air during a battle. Anyways, let's get back to judging. As always, I'm going to start with the spine. The first thing I noticed was this red dot right here. From a distance, it looked like a stab you would get from a rapier, like the book itself had been struck, especially with that title and font, Traitor's Blade. The spine did its job and got me to notice it. But the closer you get, the odder this dot looks. I'm not actually sure what it's supposed to be. If you know, please comment below. My best guess is that it is a wax seal that is either smudged or supposed to be painted over with blood. I think it's a seal because the more I analyze it, the more I see a knight holding up a sword and shield. I get why it might be messy, but it makes it seem way less cooler than my initial impression. The title, however, that sparks my interest. You already know what I think about the font, but that combined with the title itself tells me almost at a glance what type of story I'm in for. Without even seeing the front cover, I have some set expectations about this story. It likely takes place in the Renaissance era and will probably be an action adventure with hints of mystery and subterfuge. The closest comparison that I can think of would be something like the Three Musketeers. At least I believe that this is the direction that it looks like this book is going. I'm going to assume that the author's name is underneath these stickers, but when I turn to the front cover, Sebastian's name seems a little too long to fit under there, unless they shrunk it way down. It's more likely that it's the publishing company logo, but I'll never know now, and it's all because of Nameless Librarian Friend. With the spine as judged as it can be, let's turn our attentions over to the front cover. As I make my transition over, I notice these marks on the edge of the book that cause from wear and tear. Now I know it's part of the design because the book is wrapped in these nice plastic to protect it from damage. Thank you, nameless librarian friend. You finally did something good. At least I would say that if this stuff was impossible to take off and made it harder for me to film because of all the glare. Thanks a lot, nameless librarian friend. Anyways, I think it's a fun detail that makes me think of some sort of sealed document that's been on a long journey. I don't know if that's in the book, but it's definitely interesting. Turning the book more to see the front cover, we are met with this sort of hourglass shape, made up of the author's name and title on the top, then underneath are what I assume are the three main characters, the rogue, the brute, and the archer, all of them bathed in different values of red, continuing the blood or traitor theme. It also solidifies them as a group or band of brothers, 
as their bonds go deeper than blood. Showing these figures was probably the best thing the cover could have done to sell the book to its targeted audience, because in this genre, these three tropes coming together is almost expected and even welcome. That said, when it comes to the larger market, doing something different with the three other than posing them would have been preferred. And this is why I don't like the alternate cover. It shows a different pose which adds nothing and removes two of the characters, totally eliminating the idea of companionship, which added tension to or even directly combated with the idea of traitor, which was planted in our minds by the title. In essence, it tosses out theme in an attempt to appeal to a larger audience, but ends up looking like every other book out there instead. Get out of here! But let's get back to this cover. I believe the hourglass, or at least time running out, must be a central theme or tension in this book, as the shape is definitely purposeful, from the red cape that is dramatically extended to the army's formation underneath the title. If it's not an hourglass, there could be another possible reason for this. It might be suggesting that they betrayed the army, or that the army betrayed them, as they are both pointed at each other with weapons drawn. Again, this betrayal idea coming from the title. This is another example of title and artwork coming together to form some sort of story in our minds about this cover before we even open the book. And finally, the most generic quote I've ever read. One hell of a book. Yep, that's right, that's all it says. No suggestion on why, type of book, or even a hint to why the author likes it. I mean, it's short, but it's not to the point. It tells me nothing about the book and should be removed from the cover. The back is not much better. On a generic tower background, which is simple and okay, I guess, we get just as generic quotes. The main highlights for me that actually made a difference were the part about the story being recommended to people who have had it up to here with unhappy heroes, and that got me a little excited. The other quotes kind of confirmed the Three Musketeers motif. It's nice to get that confirmation, but these things could have been expressed in a nice blurb, which, for most hardcovers, is inside the book. In general, it's a nice blurb. The story sounds interesting, and it seems to be in line with my general expectations for the cover. It also clarifies that it is a fantasy book instead of a historical one. It gives me a good understanding of what I'm in for. All that said, I believe it still has a few problems. The first problem is something a lot of books do, and it's almost unavoidable unless you're very clever about it. It gives away the main tension or inciting incident. It's almost like being invited to your own surprise birthday party. This doesn't automatically discredit the intent, or in this case the book, but it can take some excitement away. Most books that do this in the blurb are able to make up for it with good character development and world building, so I don't count it too much against the cover's rating. I just wish that there was a better way to get the hook in without sharing a main plot point. I think this is why some people suggest not reading the blurb in the first place, but again, if the cover is good enough, Maybe you shouldn't have to. Which is my clever way of segueing into the final scores. For me, The Traitor's Blade gets an added to the TBR list. In general, it feels like the type of book I would enjoy, but I've got a few more I want to read before I get to it. But what about the target market? I would say this book cover is designed to hit a specific market within the fantasy genre, which would be lovers of Three Musketeer style books, not high fantasy fans themselves. Unlike the other cover, which is more geared towards the general audience, which sets itself up to take place in a more medieval, high fantasy setting. I believe that this cover could turn some fans off once they start reading it because of the expectations it sets up. If a general fantasy fan saw this cover, however, I believe that their expectations would be more managed as it suggests a lighter fantasy setting and takes place in the Renaissance era instead of the medieval time frame that is generally popular with that audience. With that said, I believe it would receive a score of sampled by its targeted audience. Although it's a good cover, it's not quite exciting enough for readers to consistently pick it up. In some ways it reads as an older book to the design choices, and it doesn't quite hit the charm that I think its intended audience would be interested in. But what do you think? Let me know below what score you would give the Trader's Blade cover, and if I accurately identified the targeted market for this book. If the Trader's Blade caught your attention, I linked its Amazon page below for your convenience. Thank you for watching, and if you have any covers that you think need to be judged, or just would like me to analyze, please let me know. I'm currently looking for covers from indie authors, as I feel those are the people who are going to benefit the most from this type of content. If you enjoyed this video, please be sure to like, subscribe, and share, as it'll help me grow the channel 
and allows me to continue making helpful content for writers. And as always, don't forget to learn, create, and help others do the same. I'll see you next time.